there you can see the screen right now you could just say yay or nay and since there's only two i'm going to give you um i'm going to give you audio access as well natalie if if you would like looks like it's connecting with you yeah i can see the screen nice. right. okay Everything. Well, Last week, Natalie, just as like a quick uh, recap, we talked a little bit about like your uh, the media manager right here where you could create bins. Or... Oh, <laughs> Natalie, are you okay? What happened? Oh, there was like a big, huge bang. That was weird. Um, where you could organize. Oh, I. Uh... I'm in a place where there's some electrical guys are working on oh, some okay. stuff. Cool. <laughs> so I'm in a data center right now. Okay. No problem. Um, and then, so we could organize, you know, by footage, we can create our bins just for when larger edits are happening. Um, and we could drag and drop, you know, the footage in the footage area, audio, if we have any audio in the audio area. And then we have our primary timeline where our audio and um, footage goes in and so I created just a basic timeline and I could just show you how I did that automatically here just as a quick recap so I'm going to delete that timeline if you have any footage and drag and drop it and you know that's going to be the primary footage that you're going to base everything off of you could just drag and drop it in here and it will automatically create a timeline for you with the proper frames per second and dimensions so now so um we learned a little bit of course about slicing how we could zoom in and out to cut sections out and so if we wanted her to automatically just appear in front of this couch a lot faster we would cut this whole section out and we just hit delete and then now she just zooms over to the couch Okay, so that was basically all of last time, basically what we learned. And then a little bit of audio editing. This this week is kind of the cool part. Um, it's not really advanced, which is gonna be pretty fun. Um, so we, we could do is we go to, so we talked a little bit about the media tab, which is basically your media manager um, full screen. We talked about the cut screen, which is making your primary edits. Um, and then you could see your entire edit um, in one giant timeline here and then we talked about the edit screen which is kind of like your fine adjustments which we basically just did right now now we can go to fusion but we're going to skip that right now because that's basically after effects da vinci's version of after effects so that gets pretty advanced um, but we'll touch on a little bit of that today we're going to skip it for now go right to color so if you click color um as I said last time, DaVinci is based mainly off of nodes rather than layers. So the way I have learned to use DaVinci is to kind of think of it in a sense as layers. Um, what I'm gonna do is probably adjust by level first. So like brightness versus mid-tones versus highlights. And then we're gonna look at our histogram and like color scales over here. So. Let me show you what I mean. So nodes are basically everything that connects to the primary footage. The primary footage is right here. This is your base layer or base node. We're gonna add a node here by right clicking, add node, and we're gonna use a corrector. We're gonna attach it just by dragging it onto the line, that little green arrow, bing. So this is your input, and this is going through your output line here. And then, um, so what we're gonna do first is all these adjustments down here are only applicable to this node currently because you have it selected. So if I go down here and I'm gonna uh, drop the blacks to a lot lower everywhere, you can see that it is only applying to this node. It's represented in the thumbnail. Um, and one of the important things that you should learn is the shortcut control D that's deactivating the node. So you can kind of see quickly, oh, these are the adjustments I've been making. That's pretty cool. Um, these captions are getting out of control really quick. 
Let me turn these off. <laughs> I turned on automatic captions. Okay, stop. Okay, so let's get into um, some basic editing. Okay, so right here we want to, you have your setup here. You got a bunch of options here. We're gonna work primarily in color wheels and um, curves. And then you have your, what do they call this? A qualifier. So it's kind of like a masking technique. Um, and I'll show you what we're gonna do here. So forget the qualifier for now. We're just doing curve adjustments. So let me bring in a different view. Let me kind of change the views here. Boom. Oh, I need this stupid thing out of the way. Okay. And you have, so you have your histogram view right here. You want to change from your keyframes to your histogram. And this basically gives you the um, overall color spectrum of what's being shown in the image right now. Um, I'm not going to use this parade. I'm going to use, let's see, let's try a histogram. Perfect. So these are the colors represented in this um, image right now. So as you see, if we scrub back, back and forth, it's going to shift. So the way to understand this, uh, this histogram is these are your blacks around right here to here. Zero is your absolute black, which your pixels are at zero, RGB zero, zero, zero. And then as you go up and up and up, you can see that there's a lot of our footage is in this range. So there's not a lot of whites until you get to about right here. And even there, that's not absolute white. So this is the whites. This is not a real white. And that's that's a good thing to know just simply because um, color calibrating your monitor. All monitors aren't the same, but if you do it mathematically, you would be able to look right here and see where your, your white is at. So. If we wanted to make this a more absolute white, we would grab the node here and then drag it to the left. And you could see your RGB values pulling towards your white area. So if you just pull it a little more, you could see that you just adjusted that area to be white, which is probably around right here. And then it tapers off. So that's the same for the black. If you pull the black, let me get rid of this node. If you pull the blacks to the right, you're going to see the blacks are going to go right a little closer. So now you have absolute blacks. And so now you have a full spectrum of, you know, uh, black from all the way to white. And now if you kind of wanted to, you know, make it less moody and less contrasty, um, we're going to try to pull this waveform into around this area. And I'm trying to see if I could. I want to boost this. You see it's going to spread out a little bit more. And the way to understand that, if you don't, um, is basically anything down here is black. Anything up here is white. We're adjusting RGB values all at once. So when I dragged this left, uh, it's making it more white. When I drag this right, it's making it more uh, dark in these values here. And then when I pull this one up, it's making it lighter because it's going up. So up here is white, down here is black. And then when I'm pulling to the right, it's pulling the RGB values, um, more RGB values into the dark. Gosh, that's kind of hard to understand. I need to, I need to workshop that. So as we pull it up, you're gonna see like the whole waveform is gonna be a lot more attractive in a sense. And now you're gonna see, it's a lot better looking as well. It's not as many harshness. Now it's more like a real estate commercial at this point, which is a lot nicer. So if we press Control D, you can see the original footage versus the new footage. It's looking a lot better. Okay. Um, any questions so far before I proceed? Nope, I'm following along. Cool. I need to workshop the histogram concept. I need like labels and diagrams and stuff. Um, color boost. Okay. Nope. Never mind. I'm not going to do that right now. So we've basically worked on lighting, eye levels. Okay. 
So now let's jump into um, colors. Let's right click here, add another node, which is essentially another layer. Come on. Ah. Oh, it goes in the middle. Okay. And you can see it's adopted um, the second node or the third node. Um, okay. So this is going to be our color adjustments. So um, let's start off with going. So we have the color wheels open already. We have our histogram open. And what I would like to do essentially is let's bring in like uh, let's let's do kind of like a crazy thing to make sure we understand it. So um, what do you call it? Split toning, where in the in the highlights you're gonna have one color, in the low lights or in the you know the darks or the shadows you're gonna have a different color. So we have our color wheels open. Let's go to this little icon here, which is log. And then you're going to see shadow, midtone, highlights, offset. There's different ways you could do things. I think this is the easiest way. Shadow, midtone, highlights, offset. Offset is basically uh, how I understand it, adjusting everything all at once. It's just offsetting your color. We don't want to do that. We want to work it basically from shadow, midtone, highlights. So let's say we wanted the um, shadows to have a little bit of a blue tint on it. We would grab this little node right here and then just pull it down toward blue. And you can see those, those shadows getting a little cooler. And then um, you can see it's looking awesome. It's got a cool little effect now. We're in the shadows. You have this nice, cool effect. Okay, and now let's say um, you wanted specifically the shadows to actually be a little darker, which you could do via um, levels. I might have to mute you. There we go. I muted you for a minute, Natalie. Sorry, there's a lot of background noise. Um, let's see here. And then, okay, so let's say we wanted those shadows to be a little bit darker with that blue effect. We would actually grab this little wheel here and drag left and right we can brighten the shadows we can darken the shadows individually so super fine adjustments and then i removed the blue so my bad let's pull that blue back in there a little more extreme okay and now in your highlights we're going to skip the mid-tone let's bring a little bit of red into the highlights You can see like this extreme effect. I'm gonna boost the highlights a little bit more. And you can see there's like a lot of warm in the highlights around this area now. Bing. A little more extreme. Now it looks terrible. <laughs> Okay, this is actually great footage, so dang it. I should have picked something more crappy. I mean, the white balance is like perfect. So um, let's undo those adjustments. If you just click this little button here, Natalie, you're unmuted again. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, so if you just undo those by clicking these uh, little icons here, it will allow you to um, go back to your base. So actually, um, she could use a little bit of skin work. So what we're going to do is use the qualifier tool, which is this eyedropper. The qualifier tool is basically saying all your adjustments that you're going to be making, what qualifies for those adjustments to be made. And so what we're basically saying is I want the adjustments to only be applicable to a certain area. So you got your qualifier tool. You can see it's right here. And then it's saying what do you want to qualify to be made adjustments to so let's click on her arm because that's kind of a good mid-tone area about what we want to adjust try to get a large spectrum here a little bit more rich come on i want to get a little bit of red in there orange hmm oh that was way too big okay that one's pretty good I'm going to just drag these over just a little bit where 
I don't want to get the greens very much. Let me get there. Okay. So this is what it's saying is I want to adjust the hue in this area, the saturated parts of this area, and then the luminance of this area. So I'm going to drag these a little bit bigger because I want to get a little bit of the highlights to qualify and then a little bit of the saturation. So if you press shift H, you'll be able to see what actually is being qualified. So you can see we've got a lot of her face, not a lot of the shadows in her skin detail because it's all the way up in the luminance. A lot of her body's lit very well. Um, and so we'll adjust a little bit down more, but then we're capturing too much of the, the uh, couch, which isn't a bad thing necessarily. But we really want to focus on her skin. Okay, so that's everything that's qualifying for the adjustments we want to make. So if we press Shift H, we'll go back to normal view. So now you're going to see if we change the offset, it's only going to make adjustments to those items. So a really crappy looking thing here. So I'm going to boost it quite a bit. And I'm going to blur it just a little bit. That mat, it's basically think of it as a mask. And then I'm going to put it back to normal. Okay, offsets back to normal. Okay, so that's still qualified. See everything here. And um, let's add a little bit of red into the mid tone. So you got this right here. Let's pull it up a little bit. And then you could see, so I'm going to press Control D. You could see like a minor adjustment. Barely. Let me see here. Oh, sorry. Oops. I do this, you could see everything that's being adjusted. So it's basically in the mid-tones. Just do a little more. Okay. And then the highlights, I'm going to drag a little bit more as well. The red. Well, she doesn't have much highlights that we're getting. Thanks. Let's try this one. Oh, it's disabled again. All right, I keep disabling it. There we go. Okay, so back to highlights. Okay, a little bit. Okay, so I just added a little bit of red to her skin and then now disabling you can see she has a little bit more rich um glow to her skin now i think i added too much blur on the mask or or the qualifier as we said so now in the shadows i mean we could add a little bit of red as well that's not going to make that much of a difference let's see Let's see how the footage looks. Like. So those fine adjustments go quite a bit of give quite a bit of like effect on it. So you can see she's like really dull, and then now she's got like this copper skin now, super dull. Okay, y'all along with me? Yeah. Yes. Cool. Do you mind if I ask a question? Oh, please. It. Is there any risk of, let's say, because right now I noticed it affects uh, similar tones in the couch and in the wall behind. Yeah. Uh, is, is there any, and you, you, you use a little bit of blurring, uh, is there any risk if she was in front of uh, like a skin tone, let's say like a wooden background or um, uh, something with more detail in the background of blurring that as well? Yeah, it would. It would if you use that blur mask on it. Mm -hmm. uh, anything, basically anything that's qualified within these parameters here, the hue, saturation, and luminance, basically your skin color, yeah, will receive the mask. Interesting. Okay. And so there, there is a way to, and that's why people shoot against green screens or uh, a contrasty background so they can mm -hmm. turn the person a little better. But I mean, there are, which the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you another way, which um, it's it's a basic version, but you can mask out what you want to basically qualify. So it's like mm. only qualify within this area. So I just added another node. 
So let me just, um, actually, we'll get to that in a minute. So yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, it would, it would be an issue. So it would blur the background, but um, I would just, I mean, reduce your blur. Hmm. And, and there are other ways you could do it, which I'll show you in a second. Well, that's cool. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty amazing program. And then, actually, let me go. I'm just going to try something really quick. I'm going to lower the mid-tones a bit. Okay, that's too much. There you go. So I'm just going to go a little bit. Skin a little darker. She looks a little pale. As if I'm the one to talk. There. Okay, so um, let's talk about a little bit about, and then honestly, so once we have the qualifier as well, and we're like, oh, wow, she's looking really good. We adjust the highlights. We adjusted the color. So it's just essentially um, adding, how would you say this? You don't want to say adding color. It's adjusting the color. To add color, you would do a saturation adjustment, which are all these items down here. So to even boost her color even more, you'd actually go to saturation and just pull that up. So if you wanted to give her a little bit more of a bronze look, go to 55 and pull it to 65. Now it's getting a little crazy, so I'll just do 70. And then if you wanted a color boost as well, I mean, you can go even more. Um, a color boost is, if I remember right, you're risking uh, blowing out your pixels. So you need to use that sparingly. So yeah, so um, you can even boost the richness of the color using saturation. And since you're targeted in her skin tones, it will only affect those skin tones as well. Hmm. Okay, give me a second. Not the bed. Okay, well, that's pretty good. Okay. Now I'm gonna nerd out on one last tool. Let's see here. So we have our levels, we have our um, color adjustments here. And now this is just for the sake of the tutorial and the question that um, Tim posed. You can see the new node has no adjustments on it yet. But what we're gonna wanna do is I want to maybe change these these chrysanthemums a different color. So I'm going to try to select that color range. And then I'm pressing Shift H to make sure that I can access it. So it's grabbing a lot of the dark. So I want to move it up a little bit. And it's getting the window. You can see it's getting the window, which is fine. I just want to make sure the primary of the flower is visible in our mask. Saturation, come on. Okay, I'm trying to get it. Come on. Jomo. Sorry, was that Control H or con Control Shift H? I'm, I'm sorry, it's Shift H. Shift, Shift H. H. Yeah. Oh, so you'll be able to turn it. Yeah. Okay. So now we have most of the blue selected. Let me try to get even more. There we go. So you can see how it's pulling in this screen over here. A little bit of her pants has blue in it and probably because of the luminance as well. Um, we're going to control H out of that. And we're going to say, I don't want the qualifier to go outside into that area. And so we will go to, sorry, I did that fast. Right here, you can see what's actually called um, a window. And so what we're going to do is draw a window to the area that we only want affected. We'll see how all that other stuff is out of there. Sweet. So now it'll only apply to what's inside the window. Now we won't be adjusting, you know, the outside of the um, the outside of the window. It won't adjust the sky blue. It'll only adjust in here. So we can adjust the fall off of like the the mask, the blur. So it's not just like an extreme end to the mask, even though that that shouldn't be an issue right now. But there you go. Um, okay, so now we've grabbed only the blues inside here. And now we could go to our primaries and our log wheel. And then I'm going to change it to, let's see. Well, maybe we can get crazy. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to do it here. Okay, let's see here. I'm going to do the offset. Uh, purple. I mean, we can go a little bit red without it going too weird. Green doesn't look bad. Ooh. <laughs> I like purple. That's great. And so that's a way that you could get some cool adjustments. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> see that mask? See how much it was taking out? So you could see now when she walked past that window, that uh, there's a lot of blue in that window. Okay. Okay, hang on, hang on, amigos. We just try something real quick. All right. Um, where is my tool here? Corrector four. I want to add a node. I mean a. Keyframe so it adjusts as she's walking over. I have to shrink a little more. Oh, it's going too slow. So, right here, um, Natalie, Tim, do you guys understand what keyframes are? I I've heard the word before. Okay. You too, <laughs> you too Natalie? Yeah, I've I've um long time ago I did something with keyframes. Okay. So let me just do a quick recap. Um Tim, the the key the, the term keyframe comes from like uh, animation. Hmm. Uh, there would be a person called uh, the keyframer. He would draw like all the primary frames of an animation. And the in-betweener would be the one that draws all the grunt work between those key keyframes. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so the keyframer would draw all the primary movements, and the guy, the in-betweener would draw all the movements between those primary movements. Okay, so that being said, is what we do is, like, we have our subject, and we want it to move to a certain place as the timeline progresses, progresses. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, I'm going to switch from my histogram view to my keyframe view. And you can see it has all the corrector nodes that we have. One, two, three, four. I want it on four because that's where we made the flower adjustments and we have our little thing here. I'm just going to press the primary keyframing to make an auto keyframe. And about right here is where it starts going to the window. So I already want to start shrinking it right here. And then as she progresses, let's see it starts to touch a window right there. Shrink it again. And then as she progresses even more, just shrink it again. You can see it's automatically creating keyframes and tweening it for us. So it's not just going to jump, it's going to smoothly animate this mask between those jumps and now we want it to grow again oops right here we want it to grow again okay now instead of it creating all that blue nonsense over there now when we press play Seamless. It's always, oh, dang it. There's a little bit, but nice. Cool. And so to in order to see what it's actually doing, check this out. So you can see it's it's restricting. And then I, I made it expand a little too fast. So that you can see it's actually moving, making those adjustments by itself now that we set the keyframes. And so that could be cool in situations where you have like really crappy looking grass um, in your shot and you only want the, to target 
yellow because the grass is really yellowed and the person's wearing black pants. You target the yellow um, and then you can adjust it to green and not have it affect the trees in the background because some of the trees have yellow in it. So you, you know, you would draw, you know, this on your horizon and only have those adjustments made on the lower part of the horizon. And so it has a lot of amazing features that you can do. And Tim, what you were talking about, I mean, you wouldn't shoot same color skins against, you know, a wooden backdrop and stuff. But if you did, you know, there's methods that you can mask her out. So that would only affect her. And it would basically be a super advanced version of this, which takes a lot of computing power and time. But it, it is definitely possible. The same concept is is being used here. So um, <clears throat> that's pretty much it. Let's see here. Um, are there any other questions concerning this segment? Do you mind showing me one more time the, the very start of the making making the keyframes sorry making the square line up with the keyframes on the bottom right tool yeah so let me i'm gonna delete these and then i'm gonna go to oops i clicked i think i completely deleted it whoopsie I completely delete it okay so you've got this square already tim mm-hmm Okay, sweet. Okay, so let me see here. Okay, so let's go into, you got this. So we jump from our histogram to our keyframing here. Mm -hmm. And then, so what you're going to do is you hit the keyframe button, and then it'll activate automatic keyframes. So we're going to do, so as this keyframe, or as this frame or window starts to enter in, <laughs> this actual window we're going to want to hit this node right here and we're going to want to pull it okay you'll, you'll see this keyframe will be created automatically and so you're going to want to drag your timeline a little farther and as it hits that again you're going to want to pull it back again and it'll create that keyframe again and then just keep doing that okay okay yep and that's the part that I missed this last time. And then I want to grow it this way because it's missing that a bit. I'm going to grow it. Bing. Cool. Okay. And there's an advanced way to actually have it like track the flowers, um, but this is, I mean, for the, for this, this is a great way to um, keep it simple and actually get it done. Okay, so let's check out the original footage. So the original footage looked a little bit like so. This is our original footage. which looks very familiar with all the black magic magic footage that we shoot. So then adding the, the level adjustment, it's that, it's that, adding the color adjustments, it's that, it's a little harsh, but whatever. And then adding the change color adjustment, that's that. Pretty sweet. Okay. Any questions overall now? And then I'm going to do one more thing. No, I'm, I'm tracking. Cool. All right. Well, I don't want to keep us too much longer. Uh, one final thing. Let's do a quick introduction to Fusion because eventually I might need help with stuff like this. And that would be cool if someone knew a little bit of Fusion. So Fusion is, like I said, the After Effects version of, I mean, of uh, Da Vinci. <laughs> well, excuse me. Uh, so if you go to Fusion, the Fusion tab, you'll see you have uh, your video, 
looks like it's the ungraded video right now. Even so, let's do this. Um, hang on. Um, so you have your media in, media out. So let's say we wanted to add something in this universe. So we have so many different options of what we could do. Um, this is like the advanced effects area. So you could see it like has a crazy amount of options. Honestly, I was just going to show you the concept of text. Um, so there's a fast way to do text. You just go to text right here. You see it add the node. You're going to drop that node into the media in and media out areas. So you're going to connect it. Since I broke the connection to media out, there's no media. So let's make sure we connect that again. And oops, we got to go to edit, edit screen here. Oh no, I broke it. Gosh, I can't remember. I don't know what I just did. Why did that just happen? Jump in there. Jump in there, little child. Oh, that should work. I don't know why it's not showing the media. Oh my, I literally just did this. Super weird. Let me try this. Maybe it's because that's really weird. Huh. It's treating it like it's writing over it. Why? I was thinking maybe we could put like a... Hang on. Let me try this. Okay. So that's working now. It's merging the media in and media out. Okay. I guess you have to actually select the timeline. And let's see what it actually, let's see the reaction we get here. That's really weird. So there we are. I'm sure that's New York. Nova Ciento. I think it's like whatever you want. I, I don't know why I'm obsessing over it. It's gotta be beautiful. Ah, okay, I'm just going to do this. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm going to do thin, tracking. Ooh. Okay. Okay, so you see here, um, you go to the edit area. It is actually super weird. It's embedding into the actual media in, media out of this. I wanted to create a layer for us, but it's not creating a layer automatically, which is really weird. So it's like embedding it in here. Uh, I'm going to work on that. Um, but you can see it's actually working. But the issue with that is, is we cannot control when it disappears necessarily. Um, we could probably control it with like a, a keyframe, but that's not going to work. So it looks like I need to do a little bit of uh, research. Sorry, guys. Story guys. That is super weird. Okay, well, dang it. Oh, maybe now that there's a video too. Mm -mm, mm -mm. That's aggravating. Okay, one last try. Sorry, everyone. No, I can't figure it out. I'm not cool enough. Okay, the introduction to Fusion was a, a sad day. Come on. Let's see. Oh, you know what? Hang on. 
Where's that hidden at? Yeah. All right, sorry guys. I don't want to. I don't want to dwell on that. Um, okay, so at least we got through the um, color editing, okay. level editing, and then basic masking. Any questions on anything else? It's been about forty minutes. That should be sufficient time. No, I'm I'm good. I think. Okay, cool. I'm gonna post yeah. this replay if you need any, you know, feedback. We go ahead, Natalie. Um no, I was just going to ask you if you were going to do the uh, replay. Yes. Or like where we could review this. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool. We got like, um, let me see here. Let me delete this crap. I got to figure out why that's not showing. I am a little confused. Okay. But yeah, you can see the difference between where we started and where we are now. That's cool. Well, okay, guys. Well, thanks for having me teach you all. Hopefully one day we get to work on a project together where we're editing together. It's be super cool. And it will be Project Jericho's first music video. Oh. That'd be so cool. Really cool. Yes, we have all the gear. It's just time. But all right, thanks everyone. I want to give you guys a call to action. See more of my work here. You you really don't have to. Do you see anything? I I do not. <laughs> oh now. Oh now I do. I see a see more work. Oh cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I've been thinking about like what can I be like check out the work files here. Click on this. Yeah, stuff like that. Um, all right, guys. Well, thank you. Thank you. Well, Have thank a nice you. day. I got to get going to my uh, kids' parent-teacher conference. Oh, fun. Adios. Bye-bye. <laughs> See ya. Bye.